Welcome to our statics video module. Today I'm going to ex add one more tool to what we already have. Let's quickly take a look at uh, what I've drawn here. I have a, uh, in gray, I have the surface of a, uh, of a table right here, or some sort of, you know, ground surface. And on top of it, I've placed a block. Uh, let's color this block purple while we're at it. I've placed this block and I've drawn uh, some of the forces. We have an applied force, a force of gravity, and a force of friction. Now, for right now, we're going to ignore any type of torques or anything trying to rotate things. And if that's the case, we can draw our free body diagram. And you've probably done something like this already plenty of times. We have an applied force. We have our force of gravity. And then uh, opposite to the applied force, we're going to have a force of friction. And what I want to spend one or two minutes asking is, how does this friction work? What is this friction and how much is it and wh what governs, what are the rules that it governs? Now, let's imagine that we want to compare the applied force, which is on the bottom, with whatever the frictional force is. Now, let's say that you have no applied force. You're just letting it sit there. Well, that corresponds to this vertical axis. Well, what it, what's the frictional force? Absolutely nothing. The friction force is zero. Now instead, we're going to start applying a force. We're going to start pushing on that block a little bit, and that block is going to push back. It's not going to move, so we're going to apply two ounces or a pound of force, and we're going to feel that two ounces or pound of force foot pushing back because the block's not moving. In that case, the force of friction and the applied force are exactly the same. But as you know, that can only continue for so long. At one point, right here, it the uh, friction is going to be at its absolute max. If you push any more, it's going to slide. Then what happens is you push it just a little bit of a nudge, and this is what we call, this, this is its static threshold. This is the static force of friction is at its maximum. As soon as it starts to move, it drops down. Now, if you apply whatever force you apply, it doesn't matter how much force you're applying, you're going to get the same frictional force pushing back. I bring these up because in the problems you're going to encounter, you need to first identify which of these areas you're dealing with. Is it one? No friction. In this case, friction is just not, it doesn't even need to be there. It can be a perfect, if it can be a perfect uh, surface, no friction whatsoever. That's this area right here. You see that every now and again. Another big one is that the force of friction equals the applied force. This is like the second stage where the applied force that you're doing is less than the, um, than the maximum amount that the force of friction can take. And a lot of times this force of friction that it can take when it's static, we call this the force of friction static. That's it. That's the best it can do. And in order to get that, we take, uh, just as a quick reminder, force of friction static equals the static coefficient times the force of gravity. So this is any time where you're pushing it, but you're not yet to the maximum that um, that can happen. The third category is when the force applied equals the force of friction static. This is when your applied force, this is equal to the most amount of frictional force this situation can take. This is stage three. So a lot of times when you see problems where they say what is the most amount of force it can take or what is the force it takes right before it starts moving, this is what they're looking at where the applied force equals the force of friction static and that is mu s f g. The final category that we see is what happens if an object is moving. This is stage four, where the applied force is greater than um, is greater than the most the most that the frictional force can handle. But notice something. Notice that the force of friction drops down right here. Once you get a once that thing starts to move, once you get right beyond that static threshold, it drops down, and it drops down to the force of friction kinetic. And the force of friction kinetic is simply the uh, coefficient 
of kinetic uh, the, of uh, kinetic friction times the force of gravity. So in this case, the force applied is greater. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The uh, the force of friction is equal to the kinetic force times the force of gravity, and the um, the force applied is the um, whatever the force is beyond the force of friction. So these are your four areas. One, no friction. Number two, the friction is less than the maximum that it can be. Here, let's do this. Number three is this is the force applied is equal to the static friction. We're right at the threshold where it's going to move. It hasn't yet done so. And number four, the kinetic, the um, force of friction is equal to the kinetic coefficient times the force of gravity. This is where it's moving.